Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Acupuncture is My Life show. I'm Dr. Lott, a licensed, board-certified doctor of acupuncture. And I'd like to say the purpose of this show, in general, is to have the opportunity to enlighten individuals who lack understanding of how acupuncture works ways in which it's diagnosed, how treatment protocols are put together, and basically the overall benefits of acupuncture. You see, when it comes to acupuncture, a lot of its theory relative to understanding cause, diagnosis, as well as treatment protocol surrounds the theory of yin and yang. Now, I'm sure most have seen the symbol of a white fish looking shape within a circle split with a black fish looking shape within the same circle with opposite colors within it. See, this symbol and understanding its theory is extremely important to an acupuncturist. Acupuncturists view the balance of yin and yang the same way a physician would view homeostasis. Now some may ask, what is homeostasis? Homeostasis is a tendency toward a relatively stable equilibrium between interdependent elements as maintained by physiological processes. And this understanding of homeostasis is extremely important to a physician, just as yin and yang being in harmony is important to an acupuncturist. Now, understanding yin and yang to an acupuncturist is extremely important. It's equivalent to, as I stated, I just stated, to a physician understanding the meaning of homeostasis. You see, to an acupuncturist, our physiology, pathology, diagnosis, and treatment can all be reduced to the theory of yin and yang. You see, an acupuncturist tends to view a typical physiological process, sign, or symptom in accordance with the theory of yin and yang. You see, most individuals see yin and yang as two opposites that exist separate and absolute from each other, which is incorrect. The yin and yang symbol actually represents creation theory. Now, when I say that, I'm basically saying yin and yang actually form a unity and complement each other. So whenever you see the yin and yang symbol, I'm sure you notice a small dot of its counterpart within it, i.e. a small black dot within the white and a small white dot within the black. This indicates that nothing is totally yin as well as nothing is totally yang because over time, yang 
eventually changes into yin and vice versa. Yin and yang basically represents a dynamic balance of opposing but yet complementary and interconnected forces. A good example of that is when day, which is yang, eventually turns into night, which is yin. Nothing can be considered totally yang, nor can anything be considered totally yin. You see, when the sun rises, that is the point of yang within yin. Now, when the sun has fully risen around noontime, then it's totally yang. Now, when you get to the point of, let's say, between 4 and 6 p.m., and the sun is going down, now you have yin within yang. And then when you reach 12 midnight, you have totally yin. Now, as I'd stated earlier, yin and yang can also be seen as interdependent to each other because one cannot exist without the other. And a good example of that, again, day which is yang can only come after night, which is yin, and vice versa. And another example can be there cannot be activity, which is yang, without rest, which is yin. Which is why an acupuncturist understands their interdependence in theory and they apply it to the process of diagnosing a patient. Now, when comparing yin and yang to homeostasis, yin and yang under normal circumstances physiologically should exist in a constant state of dynamic balance, which is usually maintained by a continued adjustment of their relative levels and an acupuncturist is well aware of this. And when it comes to the human body, an acupuncturist understands that your back is yang and your front is yin, as well as above your waist is yang and below your waist is yin. The exterior of your body, which consists of, let's say, your skin and your muscles, and is responsible for protecting you is considered yang. And the interior of your body, which for the most part consists of your internal organs and are responsible for nourishing you, is considered yin. Now, take a moment after this episode and just think about what I just said. Give it some time. I'm sure it'll eventually become a bit more clear. Now, the yin aspect of yin and yang is seen as grounded earth energy. And its nature is receiving, cool, and dark and tied to the moon, the oceans, and the shade, and is associated with feminine energy. Now, the yang aspect of yin and yang represents the sun, its light. It's also expansive and somewhat reckless at times and is associated with masculine energy. Now, the theme of yin is basically contemplation, contraction, quietness, stillness, softness. Whereas the theme of yang is action, growth, expansion, as well as heat. So I hope you can take from that. Yang, just as I 
discussed earlier, it being tied to night. What do you do at night? You sleep. You relax. You rejuvenate. That's yin. Now let's go to yang. Yang, as I'd stated earlier, is tied to daytime. What do you do during the day? You're active, can be sometimes reckless. You tend to get hot. Energy is abundant. But now, looking at the interchangeable aspects of yin and yang, and this the theory of yin and yang is so awesome. Let's go back to the internal organs. Now, I know you heard me state earlier that the internal organs are considered yin because of its nourishing, nurturing, I'm sorry, nature. Now, some of your internal, internal organs can be considered young, but this is when we're discussing its functions. You see, some of your internal organs pertain to yin and some pertain to yang. And I stated this earlier, yin and yang is not of total opposites. You see, your yang organs such as, let's say, your stomach, large intestine, small intestine, bladder, and gallbladder are organs that transform digest as well as excrete impure fluids. Those functions of those organs are considered yang functions, whereas your yin organs, which are, let's say, your lungs, spleen, heart, kidney, and liver, tend to store the pure essence, or you can say nutrients, of foods ingested and transformed by your yang organs. And these functions are considered yin functions because of its capacity to nourish. So within the body, the theory of yin and yang is constantly changing, transforming just simply based from the example in which I just given you. Internal organs being yin, but now some of their functions are yang, although the organ is still yin. See, yin and yang reminds us that there is a natural order to the universe and productivity comes from it being in harmony. And this is where it gets a bit more focused to an acupuncturist. You see, once a patient walks into the office of an acupuncturist, the moment that patient walks in, diagnosis begins. And most patients are unaware of that. The way you walk determines the balance of yin and yang within you. Your tone of voice represents the balance of yin and yang within you. Your approach, your posture, your shin, the sclera of your eyes. This is just to name a few to an acupuncturist says a whole lot. 
by the time you've said hello, your name is, to an acupuncturist, a good one third of the diagnosing process has been completed and you're totally unaware of that. And it's all related to yin and yang. Just from simple examples that I've given you. If you walk into an acupuncturist clinic and you're slouched over and you appear not to have energy, but I'm here because I'm not feeling well. Let's get this over with. You're appearing is being young deficient. So you see, the theory of yin and yang is extremely important to an acupuncturist. And more times than not, when someone comes into to the clinic, there's a disorder that needs to be addressed one of the approaches the acupuncturist would take is to balance yin and yang, harmonize yin and yang. Now you still have a good percentage of individuals that once yin and yang has been harmonized and they're feeling better. They still continue to come in for wellness visits because they want to maintain that. Because health is wealth. When you feel good, you look good, you speak good, you present good in so many ways. And you see, one of the ways, there are several ways to find balance of yin and yang within the patient because living in a Western culture, so many aspects of the Western culture disrupt the balance of yin and yang and it tips the scales more toward yang energy and when that happens yin becomes deficient and cannot properly nourish and regulate yang and you'll start noticing symptoms of signs of sweating a lot tendency toward anger and irritability. You may present with a red tongue, red sclera of the eyes. You may feel your palms or the bottoms of your feet and it's constantly hot. This is how culture in the Western society disrupts this balance. And there are several ways to restore it. One of the ways is prioritizing rest. Rest is extremely important. Extremely important. You see, those that stay up late to watch different sporting events or their favorite show or what have you, they're burning the candle at both ends. Why do I say that is because staying up late, when you're up at night during a time of yen when you should be resting, you're burning energy. And every time you're up doing something, even if it's just watching television, you have to process what you're seeing. But staying up late stimulates your sympathetic nervous system. Which keeps you charged up and perpetuates an imbalance of yin and yang. Now, 
after a certain period of time, too much of this young type of activity would begin to interfere with the body's biological clock. Or should I say, Carcadian rhythm. And guess what? You become more susceptible to illness. And you see, the Western culture leads individuals to believe that productivity and increasing your output is a way of life. So you will get individuals who will stay at work late because they want to either meet quotas or go beyond expectations of their boss so forth and so on and that's not good because you're pushing your limits you're overriding your natural need for recovery for rest and for rejuvenation never underestimate the importance of rest for both your body and your mind. Take a moment and think. Have you ever had a night where you either stayed up late to watch your favorite show, sporting event, go out, have a few drinks with colleagues, attend a party, or you're just working late? Lie down, get up a few short hours later, and you don't, you're not feeling rested. You're not feeling rested. Too much of that can create a myriad of problems in your future. Not just medium term, but long term as well, and can lead to chronic illness. Because yin and yang is out of balance. There's too much yang and very little yin. And sometimes when individuals do this, they feel to remain healthy, well, at least I'll get my exercise in every day. I still wake up, I go for my morning jog, or I'll hit the gym, come home shower, and feel that they're maintaining good health. Well, let me ask you this question. At what expense are you doing this? You see, of course, exercise is a great way to stay healthy. But you're looking for trouble when you sacrifice your sleep. To get a quick workout in. Exercise. Again, is young because you're burning energy. You're being active. And these approaches to exercise are counterproductive. It's just a recipe for injury. Take a moment and think about it. When yin and yang is not balanced, you're not getting enough sleep. You're not recharging. But then you ever have those nights where you know you didn't get enough sleep and then you go and you exercise and something just starts hurting and you wonder why? I've seen it many times at the gym. Oh man, I hate this. My shoulder's killing me. 
Okay. Your shoulder hurt. I ask, how was your sleep? Oh, I did about four or five hours. Okay. Take a week off from the gym and get between seven and nine hours of sleep per night and then come back. Tell me how your shoulder feels. And I've had individuals that have done that and were amazed. And I will explain this theory of yin and yang in this fashion. And they learned to respect this balance and understand that night is for rest. Day is your time to be active. But when night falls, that's the time of the end. It's time to rest. Another thing to think about when looking for balance is eating simple and in accordance with the seasons. And when I say eating simple, fat-free, sugar-free, take those, take the sugar and some of the fats out of your diet. Because excess, well, unnatural sugar, that's like sugar in the bag, the white sugar. Like quality sugar has come from your fruits and vegetables. Certain types of fats found in salmon and so forth, quality fat. It's good for you. The bad fats and sugars tend to send people in crisis or stress mode. A more balanced approach to dieting will look different for each and every one of us. But you can't go wrong in eating in accordance with the seasons. And in future episodes, I will get deep into that. But back to night being yin, make time for yin activities throughout the day where you can just sit back and just relax, meditate. Lower your yang energy. Do breathing exercise to recenter yourself. This is extremely, extremely important. Try and turn off your cell phone, your television, your laptop, your tablet. Definitely by 7 o'clock. Give it a try. And just go into your bedroom. Let there be darkness. Cold temperature. Because yin is cold. And dark. Yang. Correlates with heat and light. So let there be darkness. And coolness. And close your eyes. And more times than not, you'll find yourself in a restful sleep. But there are other things that can affect your sleep as well. And like I said, we'll get into that here on Acupuncture is My Life in future episodes. You see, because when it comes to yin and yang, is the key to prosperity. And by balancing out the opposing but complementary forces of yin and yang in our lives, we as human organisms can achieve a more vibrant as well as sustainable health. My recommendation to you, if you haven't already sat with an acupuncturist, look up your local acupuncturist. It'll be worth it because there's so much to acupuncture 
And I know many out there have a phobia for needles. Oh, I don't want things inserted inside of me. Yeah, acupuncturists do acupressure as well. But I just want to leave you with the fact that yin and yang and its theory is there for a reason. Life is about balance. And one thing I need you to do is to, for you to make acupuncture a part of your life. Because acupuncture is my life.